live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE. Covering KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe 2019. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and ecosystem partners. Hi and welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host Corey Quinn and you're watching theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage of KubeCon, Cloud Native Con 2019. Happen, happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, Jeff Ferrer, who's the Vice President and Chief Architect of Small Business and Self-Employed Group at Intuit. Going to talk about your cloud journey. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome, glad uh, to be here. All right, <laughs> so, so Jeff, the, the easy part of this is, I think most of our audience has probably heard of Intuit, but maybe give us that, that first setting of, you know, the part of the group you're in and your role, and then uh, we want to get into that journey. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Um, so yeah, first of all, thanks for having me here, and uh, um, uh, I'm uh, what's called the chief architect of the uh, small business and self-employed group. Intuit is about uh, powering prosperity around the world. That's our, our uh, fairly new mission, and uh, um, helping both taxpayers uh, with TurboTax, uh, and QuickBooks is our other big project. So think of me as the chief architect for the QuickBooks group. Um, and so mostly for small businesses, helping small businesses survive through their first year, uh, survive uh, and prosper uh, continuing on, so. Okay, and you know, your, your charter there, is yes. that the infrastructure on so there? As a, you're, you're not trying to help the world rid those like, you know, malicious attacks of like, oh no, I got the new TurboTax and it didn't work well, um, <laughs> because, you know, disclaimer, you know, I'm not paid, I've used it for many years, Yes, it's yes. super easy for me, <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> as, a, as a chief architect, I, I set the technical direction of the uh, overall QuickBooks franchise. Um, both the desktop version, which is our, our older older version that, that you know, has been around for 20, 25 years, uh, and our QuickBooks Online version, which is uh, uh, about only about 15 years old, um, and is our SaaS offering. Uh, and so I do things like choose technologies that we adopt. Uh, I do things like um, uh, set what are the most important technology priorities, uh, whether it's uh, breaking things up into microservices, our cloud strategy, Kubernetes, um, going to cloud native, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so you are a member of the Technical Oversight Committee, but we're actually going to bring you back a little bit later to talk about that, so we'll yes. put a pin in that. But yes. give us a little bit as to kind of what led to this journey towards cloud and you know all of those pieces that you were just talking yes. about. Yeah, so, um, like many other uh, companies with uh, you know lots of lots of uh, legacy and and lots of lots of code that we've developed uh, over about uh, 35 years of of existence, um, uh, we we actually started out uh, in the early 2000s with um, uh, building our own data centers, right? Um, and uh, it's very expensive, very uh, uh, very ambitious. But at the time, there really wasn't a public cloud, and so um, but we realized that um, you know putting servers under our desks and stuff like that, you know, we really needed to, really needed to grow to a more robust data center. And, uh, um, at, you know, as we progressed in that journey, we figured out we, we're not the experts at, um, at maintaining and developing all the complicated networking you have to do, uh, reliability, uh, resiliency. We had some outages. Um, this is 10, 10 years ago or so, where a truck dro drove into a, a light post outside of one of our data centers and uh, you know took us down for a day, and that's just not acceptable for our customers. And so, um, we uh, uh, the public cloud was just starting out. AWS um, was a, a big partner with there, and our CIO and and CEO met with uh, the AWS um, executives and uh, really decided that. Um, we needed a great partner uh, in public cloud that really uh, w was their technical expertise. And so um, we began this journey, at mostly I would describe it as lift and shift um, of technologies that, um, and services that we already had. Um, we had to rewrite a few of them to make them actually work with the cloud. Um, but by and large, most of our code is written in Java um, and that ports pretty well. So um, we, we started on that journey and, and uh, really uh, right now, um, we are mostly running in the public cloud. Uh, we have a few legacy systems that are still running in our private data centers, but we're planning on decommissioning those. And with the public cloud, um, uh, a, a journey we we really have seen a uh, quite a a um, improvement in our reliability, our downtime. We can fail over between availability zones. It's it's just been fantastic from our overall uh, availability recoverability standpoint. 
but what we realized during that journey was uh, that that the um, that the the AWS native experience um, for our developers, um, while AWS is just an amazing amazing partner, it wasn't quite. Um, the developer experience we, we wanted. Uh, it and has so some we, sharp edges. Yeah, we worked with them on that, and uh, that's why we uh, started looking at cloud native technologies, things that are developed by the community. AWS is part of the community as well, and so they were extremely supportive in our journey to, wanna, to want to, from the developer experience standpoint, really start to press on these cloud native technologies. Wonderful. Uh, as you went down that entire path, uh, whenever a company goes public and they put in their S1 that they're doing some committed level of a uh, giant deal with AWS, people immediately chime in with, oh, they could save so much money by building and running their own data centers. <laughs> how, how do you stand on that particular perspective? So what's really interesting about our, 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 our public cloud journey, right, is it's, it's not necessarily about saving a lot of money, right? Um, and. Uh, uh, we realize that, you know, and, and to it as a mature company, we're, you know, we're not a startup looking to shave every little penny off of uh, every little server. What we really want is, uh, is reliability for our customers. We want awesome operations. And so the public cloud journey actually hasn't been a huge, huge uh, cost savings, but it has been a huge improvement in all these other levers, so it does amazing things for our customers. And we're looking to cloud native as just another you know, bump up in that overall thing where we get like immediate uh, mean time to recovery where, where things go down, things go wrong, and we, we get those, those pods and those services right back up and running. Yeah, uh, can I elaborate a little bit about the, the, the application that you're talking about? Like when I first heard you say, you know, we just lifted and shifted there, yes, it's like, yes. ooh, wait, you yeah. know, <laughs> a lot of times that is when we kind of claw things back because it costs more than I thought or it yes. didn't run as well as I thought. It turns out the mainframe's hard to move because they didn't build an AWS 400 yet. Yeah. Yes. There's yeah. something that <laughs> yeah. has to happen. So, so, so yeah. the challenge is there and then you know, connect the dots with that to what, what you're calling yeah. the cloud native piece yes. of this as to what your application development yeah. looks like. So I'll use uh, QuickBooks Online as an example. Massive property, over four million customers uh, I'm running one of them. on that. <laughs> and uh, the, uh, it started out uh, um, as a um, as, as our kind of our first really big foray into SaaS, right? Um, and uh, luckily at the time we wrote it and mostly in Java, um, but it was written as this huge monolithic piece of code, right? Uh, and so um, millions of lines of code, you can imagine large memory footprints, all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and so during our, our, um, our first, for, for public cloud, we just looked at like, well, we're not going to rewrite these millions and millions of lines of code, but we want to get into the public cloud. Lucky for us, EC2 instances, things like that, can run those large memory footprints. Uh, but once there, we really started examining like, okay, what does this look like as microservices? Because when you have over 400 engineers working on a single code base, imagine what doing a release, a release is a ceremony, right? It's a, <laughs> it's like this, you know, huge thing you have. Uh, it you takes know, a many page calendar exactly, in order to do those Exactly, exactly. And so um, what we really wanted to do is press into the microservices journey and say like, okay, what if instead of having this huge oil tanker, you know, driving down the, driving down, or, you know, sailing down the ocean, what if we could be a bunch of speedboats, right? And use that analogy. And, uh, and that's where cloud native comes in because that's really what it's meant to do, right? Is a bunch of independent teams doing DevOps, you build it, you run it, right? Um, you write the code, you run the code. Um, and so it, it just plays right into this, this ability to be very agile, give each team, you can imagine at a scale of 4,000 engineers, you want, every little pizza team, you know, to be independent and do their own releases and not have to coordinate all, right. all of so, each so other. So, Jeff, which of the, you know, CNCF pieces are you using it into it? And I would like you to go in a little bit, like, you know, Kubernetes, a lot of people, it's like, oh, well, I want portability, and it sounds like you're all in primarily on one public cloud, so that's probably not the, the first thing yeah. on your list, so yeah. help us understand the landscape from your eyes. So, uh, really, it's about, um, it's about developer productivity. And that that's, so yes, we do have this, a very good, strong partnership with AWS, and that is our public cloud provider. And so the cloud native technology using obviously Kubernetes, um, obviously, uh, you know, we're running, um, 
uh, Docker in the background for, uh, for running the containers and all that infrastructure. Um, we have our own open source uh, called Argo, um, which we're using for deployment uh, in the community, so we're contributing a little bit back to the community as well. Uh, we're using Istio and Envoy as a service mesh to, to really uh, secure the inner service communications and, and, and support all the routing and whatnot. And uh, we're also leaning very heavily now into serverless technologies. So we rewrite our app QBO, um, our QuickBooks Online is a stateful application, but we're realizing the power of having these really stateless small functions. And so we want to do that as well. And the way we look at it as Lambda is a, is a fantastic technology for something like that, but the developer experience, we want the same developer experience for uh, for our containers that we do from our functions, right? And you, if you really think about it, it's just about deploying, it's how you deploy. Do I deploy into containers and in a pod structure like in Kubernetes, or do I deploy to a functions as a service? It should run on the same infrastructure. And so, um, but from a developer standpoint, from the end developer that's actually developing the applications and services that our customers are using, we want the declarative infrastructure of Kubernetes. We want the, 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 the ease of deployment and of operations. I mean, you can, you can, uh, um, uh, you can just imagine a, a, a development team not having to learn um, uh, the, the huge depth that's behind that Kubernetes. That, that developer experience is just, is just unbelievable and second to none. And you can imagine these teams sitting around you know, at lunchtime doing their release, something goes wrong, they're on the call, they're, they're solving the problems for their customers, in fact, doing another release if there's any problems. And so that's where we really, really lean in heavily to these cloud technologies, so the, uh, the cloud native technologies, so we can get even faster at the, at the, devel the developers. Do you find that Making it more accessible and having a, a consistent developer experience has, I guess, broadened the ability of your developers to iterate more rapidly? Or is it more about ensuring consistency across the board? Is it a speed, in other words, is it a speed value for you? Or is it more about just consistency so you can wind up up to point to multiple architectures? It's really about both. Okay. Um, uh, we, we see, um, you know, agility is often confused with speed and velocity. Um, but, uh, uh, but we see that, um, uh, Enabling a developer to release code to production in just a few minutes is extremely, extremely powerful to the overall velocity. Because what they're more likely to do is they're more likely to um, experiment, be bold, try new things, see if the and then get immediate feedback for the customer. Uh, there's a there's this experiment uh, lo experimentation loop that you you want it to move as fast as possible. And so um, not only that. Uh, but to your second part about the um, about the consistency, it's for a company like Intuit with 4,000 developers. You want your you want mobility in your organizations, and so you want someone to feel very natural going from one small pizza team to another, um, and have the same tools, the same deployment architecture, and the same thing, right? So you're not retraining them on on a ton of different technologies. All right. So, Jeff. You know, what could the ecosystem, you know, the, the partners you're working with, the various ecosystems, what could they do to make your life easier? I mean, the one that comes to mind for me is, you know, today serverless, you know, yes. Lambda specifically, yes. and Kubernetes. Um, there are some ways to get them, you know, work yep. a little bit, but you know, is, is that top of your mind or are there other things? Uh, that is actually really top of my mind. Um, uh, we have a, a lot of teams experimenting with Lambda. We're running huge workloads in Lambda, um, but we're very much worried about this if there's teams working on that and it's it's very um, uh, it's very fragmented. Some teams are deploying lambdas off their laptops. Other teams are are uh, um, uh, you know using CI/CD processes. And so um, we we want that experience to be consistent, secure, and and everything. And so as it moves to more production workloads, right? We would really. Uh, like the Kubernetes and the CNCF or the CNCF Foundation to really have a story about about serverless itself. I think it's probably more aptly called functions as a service or running functions. And I think a lot of the thing happens is that it's it's treated as a versus. It's like, oh, I'm going to skip over that containers Kubernetes thing and go to serverless because it's versus, right? It's not versus. It's a it's a choice for the They're developer. Aligned. Event, about long enough do I want to deploy in functions, yeah. in short-running functions, or do I want to 
I want to deploy in containers. Everything else up to that point is the same. And so I'd really like to see, and that, as my uh, role on the, on the uh, technical oversight committee, that's something I'm really focused on for the end users, because I see that a lot in the end user communities. They're dealing with the same thing that, that we are on that, on that functions as a service. All right, so Jeff, before I let you go, yes. uh, Intuit's an award winner, so yes. congratulations on that. Thank I you. I want final word from you. Talk a little bit about the award and to talk to your peers that might be, you know, they've heard about Kubernetes, but you know, we're we're into the, you know, we've crossed the chasm in the majority, but that still yes. means there's a lot of people that are still relatively early. What do you recommend to them? What tips would you give them? And start with the award, though. Yeah, so um, we are extremely honored uh, to be uh, the CNCF end user uh, award winner. Um, uh, we our our uh, um, cloud journey has been. Um, uh, a really interesting one that came really out of a, also out of an acquisition that we did um, uh, of some, some fantastic Kubernetes experts, about 14 of them, a little company called Aplatix that had this Argo project, and their mission was to make Kubernetes accessible to the overall community. Um, and by acquiring them, we left their mission the same, but they're really helping Intuit, um, and we're not selling, their, they're helping the community for free <laughs> um, when they were charging before as enterprise customers. And that's something I'd overall recommend uh, for, the, for the peers and the, and the companies thinking about going on a cloud native journey is it's about those people that you can find here at the conference, right? About those experts that you can hire, just a few of them, um, have them come into your company, explain these things, and it turns the entire company around. We now have hundreds and hundreds of teams going through and onboarding, we call it modern SaaS internally, um, onboarding onto this, this technology because they started out with that nugget or that kernel. All right, well, Jeff, modern SaaS, love the story. Thank yes. you so much, uh, and uh, thanks for joining us, and we will see you later to talk about the TOC. Glad to be here, thank you very much. All right, thank you for, very for much. Corey Quinn, I'm Stu Miniman, and that was Jeff Brewer from Intuit. We'll be back with lots more coverage, and thank you for watching theCUBE. Oh!